In this video, I'd like to share with you how you can achieve more in less time. So my name is Simon Zucci. I'm the founder of the Property Investors Network. I'm the author of Property Magic, the Amazon number one property bestseller. I'm the founder of Crowd Property. And I run a number of businesses, training. I do a lot of social media. And people say to me, Simon, how do you have time to do all of this? So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of my top time-saving strategies and tips which you can easily implement into your life to help you achieve more in less time. So the first thing is, I always think it's important to work out some of the things you actually need to do. Now, if you ever have trouble sleeping at night and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about things, it's because your subconscious mind is processing and reminding you about things you need to think about tomorrow. So a great exercise I find is before you go to bed to sit down with a piece of paper and write down all the things you know you need to do the next day. So you can get it all out of your mind and have a really good night's sleep. Top achievers will all say that sleep is a really important factor to their success. Next thing is, once you've got your list of to-do items, um, I would suggest that you prioritize that list. It's all too easy to tick off the, the quick things, the easy things, so that we feel good because we've made some progress on our action list. But sometimes we get very easily distracted. I don't know about you, I spend a lot of time in my various social media groups uh, helping and answering questions and things, but it can be a real distraction. And although that's valuable, it's not the thing that's gonna move me forward the most. So you should work out what are the most important things that you actually need to do and try and prioritize them. So if you could do just one thing, what would that most important thing be? And once you've done that, what would the second most important thing be? And once you've done that, what would the third most important thing be? So therefore you've got your three top things that you need to work on next day. Next you have to think about, okay, how do I actually get the time to take action on the things I know I need to do? So a friend of mine, Joseph McClendon III, he's an incredible guy, he's, you may know him, he's Tony Robbins, uh, lead trainer, if you've been to a UPW event with Tony, uh, Joseph runs a lot of that event for Tony, and he has a great tip where you can get an extra month of time every single year. And the tip is this, simply get up one hour earlier than you would normally, that's one hour a day, that's 365 hours in a year, which is about, 30 days of 12 hour days. So, you know, simple as it might be, crazy as it might sound, it actually works. Now, I love my sleep. I like to lie in occasionally, but I'm now in the discipline. I pretty much get up at 6 a.m. most mornings. I know some people get up at four or five. That's a little bit too far for me. But I get up before my partner gets up. What that means is I have some time to myself. And when I get up in the morning, I have a routine. I do some meditation. Um, I usually do some sort of exercise. I do some some. Uh, positive mindset stuff, I listen to audio, or I read something, or I watch a video, I really try and fill my head with positivity to start the day in the right way. And then I do something, I get on with some actual action. Um, and it's important because let's say you want to achieve a great goal. You can have things you need to do and st baby steps you need to achieve. It's by taking small steps you get to achieve big goals, by consistently doing the things you know you need to do. So. Getting up early is a good thing, maybe before other people are getting up. If you've got kids, once the kids have gone to bed. Uh, if you commute, uh, if you travel on a train, bus, tube or something, that commuting time could be used as learning time, could be used as thinking time, could be used as planning time. So rather than sitting there reading the newspaper, which is full of negativity or listening to music, why not use that commuting time practically? Now obviously if you're driving, you can't really write anything down, but you can certainly listen to some personal development, some positive stuff to put you in the right frame of mind to have a great day. Then in your diary, you actually need to schedule time to take action, to do the things that you have identified on your action list as the things that are required. And so one of my coaches suggested to me I have focused time. So let me share how this works. So the idea is that you know we have so many distractions, what with our telephone, with our email, people in our office, etc., that we sometimes need to cut ourselves off. So turn off your phone or put it on airplane mode, which means you don't get any alerts coming through. And then turn off your email alerts and put a sign on your door saying do not disturb and give yourself focus time to focus on just the one most important thing that you need to do. Don't try and do lots of things, just what's the most important thing, and you keep going until that most important thing is done. It's about having that commitment and focus. 
Focus means follow one course until successful. That's what differentiates the truly successful people and the people who never really quite get there because they're not focused on the goals, they don't know what's important, thus they don't know what to do. So make a list of what you need to achieve, prioritize that list, book in focus time into your diary. Now what you can do is have some focus time to say 45 or 55 minutes, whatever you want, but really focus time, then you take a little break, you can have some more focus time or, or relax a little bit, but you know, if you have one or two hours of truly focused time each day, you'll probably achieve more than most people achieve in, in a full working day. Just because most people are, are incredibly inefficient because they get interrupted, they have to then restart their thinking, they get distracted by other people and other things and phones and email and WhatsApp, etc. So try and isolate and insulate yourself from those distractions so you can really take the action that you know you need to do. The other thing is, you need to check in. I would recommend getting a coach or a mentor, someone who can you can bounce ideas off against because you might have this action plan, you might say, yes, I'm gonna do this, but what happens if you don't actually do it? Well, for most people, nothing. So you don't achieve your goals, no one knows you didn't do it, and there's no real recompense. Where if you have a coach, someone holding you to account, and you tell them what you're gonna do, and by the time you have that next call, you're gonna have done some of those things because you don't want the embarrassment and the pain of saying, well, no, I didn't really get around to it. Because you know, when you admit that to someone, you're just listening to your own BS of why you haven't done it, all these excuses, and it is just BS. If you wanna do something, you'll always find the time to do it because you'll prioritize, you'll stop doing some other things that are not achieving your goal. So having someone to hold you account is a really useful thing. The other thing, you need a plan. You need a plan to work for. And something I do is every three months I sit down and I do a 90 minute planning session. I map out what do I want to achieve? What's the most important thing? What are the priorities? So I have a clear vision for the next three months. And I break that down to a monthly, weekly, and then even daily so I know exactly what I'm working on. This is how I have managed to achieve so much. And actually, I've got so much more I wanna do with my life. I've got some big, exciting projects and I just wanna get on with those. So I need to be really time efficient with my time while still having time with my family and my friends and doing the things I need to do. Another big tip here um, that I wanna share with you, and this is one that, that has been really difficult for me to get, but it's so true and I wanna make sure you understand this, is that you know, being running my own business, being an entrepreneur, I never used to like taking time off. I'm the kind of person I could never really retire because I just get fidgety. I love to go on a holiday, I do lots of trips, but too much time sitting around doing nothing and I get bored, I've, I've got to get doing something. And so when I go on holiday, or, or, or because I love what I do actually, um, I sometimes probably wouldn't take as much downtime as I should take. But you know what some I've learned from the really truly successful people? is the downtime, the relaxation time, looking after yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, looking after yourself properly is so important. You cannot keep going all the time. And I've had a really busy, I'm, I'm a bit tired, but I'm gonna have some, uh, some lots of downtime. I'm going for a week skiing holiday. I've got a week my family, where I'm doing no work at all, completely relaxing, enjoying family, friends, relationships, and making sure that actually I'm fit and ready for when I come back in the new year to do the things that I know I need to do. So I'd encourage you to, by all means, set your plan, get your action going, at, but you know, make sure you are planning in quality downtime. Um, one of the coaching programs I'm participating in the moment, they endorse um, having a free day. A free day is where you do no work at all. And in fact, you don't even look at your phone. You don't even pick it up. You do no social media. You do nothing at all. You just do whatever you want, whether that's going for a walk, going out for lunch, going to the cinema in the afternoon, going to the gym, doing whatever you want to do. But a complete day off digital detox. And you know, they're hard to do, that, you know, they're difficult to plan in, but I'm starting to do more and more of them and I find them so rewarding, so relaxing. I'm doing more and I encourage you to think about that as well. That's something from Dan Sullivan and Strategic Coach, who's one of the, the groups that I'm in. So that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you this week. I hope it's been useful. I hope there's some valuable takeaways. Um, please do come and comment below. If you like this, share it with other people. And as ever, remember to invest with knowledge, invest with skill.